This is it. It goes from 9 to noon. There's another show on television called Dating in the Dark. I saw the first episode. I've seen a couple since. And it is one of the most genius shows (laughs) that I have ever seen. And the host of that show, Rossi Morelli, joining us now from Los Angeles. Rossi, I I know it's an honor for you to be with us, but it is an honor for me to even be (laughs) speaking to the host of Dating in the Dark. What... To, can you give the audience a quick 20-second synopsis of the show? Because I know, believe it or not, there are some people who haven't seen it. First of all, it's a way bigger honor for me to be on with you guys. Chick and Nick, ESPN Radio. I mean, I've been on ESPN since I was in college, so this is big for me. Yeah, thanks. Huge. Um, a synopsis of the show, man. This is basically a, a social experiment to see if you can find true love by taking looks out of the equation. We put these people in a dark room for a couple, uh, for about a week. Uh, they just they, they they live girls live on one side of this house guys live on the other uh, other side the only time they can meet is in this dark room they get to know each other on a deeper level you know they talk politics and religion and family and 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 futures and past and you name it they get to know each other on this very intimate emotional sometimes physical level and then we reveal to the to each other what they look like uh, and they decide if they want to continue to date this person based on how much they've gotten to know him in the dark room, and now how important other looks. Rossi, I guess the first question from watching the show. I mean, give us give us a real feel of how actually dark this room <laughs> is. I mean, we all know there's there's pitch blackness and there's that that dark where you can like evolve and eventually kind of see. I mean, is this thing legitimately pitch black darkness? It is the darkest room I've ever been in my entire life. I've never just. <laughs> I went, I went in there one time. They wanted me to do like some host drafts. I'm in the dark room and kind of walk around. I ran into a table, <laughs> took over my own feet. I was like waving my hand in front of my face for like an hour, and I never saw a shadow, a movement, nothing. Wow. It's, a, it's like it's it's like the, the the people came up with it. Said, you know what? I like that show, Blind Date, a lot, but I'd like the whole date to be blind. <laughs> the entire day. I mean, I'm telling you what. Blind people see more than you can see in this dark room. It's ridiculous. That's, you see no shadows. You see no. There's no. There's nothing. I mean, you're just, it's just black. That's why you see these people like looking up in the sky and like a, like a deer in headlights, or but with no headlights. They're just like looking around and like bug eyed, and you're just, you're just trying to find a comfort. And there's just it's unlike anything you'd ever you could ever do by yourself. No one would ever hang out in a room this dark by themselves. <laughs> They're really weird. Ross, Rossi Morelli, host of Dating in the Dark, which you can see tonight on ABC on Channel Seven. Uh, it's it's it's. The greatest thing about the, it's like taking every great thing about dating shows, like Love Connection, one of the all-time greats, except instead of the wall, you tear the wall down and you turn the lights off and let these guys just roam freely. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's almost like an internet dating face-to-face. You know, I mean, you, you get these, these people that come in there, and I mean, sometimes there's these, these connections. I mean, because the best part is when you go in this dark room and you take out, like, you know, body language and, and flipping of the hair and, you know, cleavage. You you get these people, the, the walls break down. I mean, they are just honest. They're raw. Sometimes they give way too much information than you would ever give on a first date or first conversation. But they have to rely on, on talking and their personality and explaining to the other person who they are, what they are, what they're all about, because you can't, you can't see anything. So you see a completely different side of people. Than you normally would in in a normal male female relationship, you know, conversation. So these people end up. I mean, they're there for like four days, five days in the dark room, hanging out. They know each other probably better than they know knew the last person they dated for a year. I mean, because they just have nothing to do except sit there and talk and tell each other everything, their hopes, their dreams, you know, what they went through through their childhood that that made them the person they are. And sometimes there's some major connections, and then it comes down to man. Can I walk around in public with you? Really? <laughs> right, and, and, right, and the right. Sad part, the sad part is, is you know, so, so they see each other in the light, then the, the girl or guy walks out on the balcony, whoever decides they want to see that person outside the house, and then they're waiting there. They're waiting for the other person to walk out and either say, hey, I like you inside the dark room, and you know what, you're good looking enough for me. And if not, <laughs> you see this person walk out the front door, dragging their luggage down the driveway. These girls in like heels, and they don't look know, back. Pulling their luggage, they don't look back at all. No, of course they don't look back. How could you? You can't. At that point, you can't <laughs> I mean, look it's, back. It's a poor puppy dog just sitting up there, just with the worst look on their face, just going really like it was all my looks that didn't do it for you, and they just like 
beeline down the driveway. It's, I mean, it's sad, but it's kind of fun. I mean, it just shows that <laughs> some people are really, really, really shallow. Yeah, people will make out with each other when the lights are off and they have no idea what they look like. But then when the lights come on, it's like it's like the ugly lamp at a bar at 1 or 2 a.m. Exactly. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, those looks become really important. I feel like I'm looking on a dance floor in Vegas at my buddy dancing with, like, the ugliest chick that he thinks is so hot. And I'm like, dude, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> It's unbelievable. Uh, Rossi Morelli joining us from Dancing in the Dark. You also played... You played receiver for the Razorbacks? Yeah, I was the wide receiver and punt returner. Uh, Three-year letterman there for the Razorbacks. Walked on, the great white hype, you know, all the good stuff. All the, <laughs> back in the glory days. Yeah, the, the the glory days. I mean, when that happened, you wanted to get in TV. Shortly thereafter was was the next level of football ever a possibility. I mean, you you, you know, you were halfway well, decent I in school. I wanted to get in TV. I, mean, I had no thoughts of being in TV, on TV, or even going to Los Angeles. I mean, I, I, my whole goal in life was to play, you know, NFL, play football. I mean, that's all I knew. That's all I cared about. That's all I wanted to do. Um, you know, I got a scholarship to a Division two college, my, my, you know, out of high school and ended up transferring to the University of Arkansas and walking on and getting a scholarship and starting and lettering the three years I was eligible to play. And then, uh, you know, by the time I was done, I'd worked so hard. I was just over it. I mean, I was just burnt out. It was it was great, and it was a wonderful experience. But to go to the next level, I knew it was going to even take more work. And I'm one of those guys. I just, I just don't stop. I'm first in line. I'm full speed all the time. I just, I just, I just go and go and go and go and go until people are like, "Can you just slow down? It's a walk through. Can we just walk through for a second? And I'm like, "No, no. I'm sprinting." Um, and I, did, you know, by the time that I got done with college, I was, I was done. Didn't I mean it would have taken me a long road to even get a shot. To make it in the NFL, I mean, if you ask me, did I have the talent? Yes. Did I have the size? No. Um, I mean, I ran a 4-4. I, I, I never dropped a ball in college. I dropped one ball in high school as a receiver. Um, you know, but I did, you know, I'm, I'm six foot. I was 165 at the time. So every scout was like, you're cute. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Rossi sure. Morelli, host of Dating in the Dark, joins us here on Schick and Nick. Rossi, I guess the question is, I mean, you were voted – uh, uh, of People Magazine's Sexiest Men Alive in, in 2003. So the question is, could you date in the dark? Well, unfortunately, it's been downhill ever since 2003. I peaked, <laughs> I peaked in 2003, gentlemen, which is kind of sad. Um, dating in the dark. I mean, you know, I would be interested in doing it because it's something that you just can't do. You never do it unless you're, unless you're on this show, really. So I would be interested to see if I'm that shallow. I don't know. I can <laughs> say that I'm not. I probably am but yeah i mean you just never know i mean i've seen some guys go home with girls they, they would never go date and and vice versa girls go take end up going with guys they're like no I, I i would you would never date that guy but then you see guys are like oh you know that girl's way out of your league and he's like oh she's just not good looking enough for me and i'm like uh, yes yeah, she is <laughs> anyone's good looking enough for you you know what i mean it's, just, I, it's, it's so interesting to see how how it moves from person to person. And it's funny, too, because guys, you know, we're strictly, we're face and we're body, and that's about it. You know, and girls are like hair, eyebrows, shirts, jeans, posture. I mean, you know, they will, they'll walk out on a guy, um, the smallest thing can just be like, I, I, I never, you know, like his hair drives me crazy. It's like, okay. Um, so it's interesting. I, I think it'd be interesting to try out, though. We got ten- in front of like six million people. But I'd like to try it out. <laughs> Rossi Morelli, we got ten seconds left. Is Arkansas going bowling this year? Yes, we are. We got we got we got a new quarterback, we got a new coach, we got all kinds of good things happening. Houston uh, left us, but uh, we I think we're gonna bounce back, do some big things, and uh, hopefully we'll at least at least be in the independence bowl. At yeah, least. I was gonna I was gonna say as a Colorado grad, I will see you in Shreveport, my man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rossi- six. Yeah. Rossi Morelli, host of Dating in the Dark. We appreciate it, man. Thanks. All right, guys. Take it easy. All right. Catch that show tonight on Channel 7. We'll come back real quick to wrap up hour number one. Chicken Nick, 1640. This is up. With nearly one full hour under their belts, it's time to look back at one of the all-time classic moments in the long and storied history of the Chick and Nick show. And we're pleased to be joined by the 44th president of the United States. Uh, thank you for your time, sir. We appreciate you being our first guest. I appreciate you having me on the show. Mr. President, we all know you're a huge Husker fan, and I don't want to get too hypothetical, but how do you think this Husker team will perform this year, assuming the defensive line could get after the quarterback? Everything is hypothetical, but the question... 
question is, are we trying to do what we need to do to ratchet up the pressure on them? Let's talk about the defensive surge this team has had under Bo Pelini. I know you were publicly skeptical at, at how quickly you thought he'd be able to turn it around here. I think that the surge has succeeded in ways that nobody anticipated, by the way, including President Bush and the other supporters. Uh, it has gone very well. Mr. President, not to get too off topic, but would you consider Iran to be as big a threat to our national security as Muslim fundamentalists? Iran is a major threat. Now, I don't think that there is a uh, the same, uh, they are not part of the same network. You've got Shia and you've got Sunni. Barack Hussein Obama, Mr. President, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Michael Severe for Gandolfo is the best place to get fresh sandwiches and deli cut sandwiches in the